Hi, I'm Stephen Holden, Executive Head Teacher, and you join me on part two of a three series set of videos for NQTs and people starting their career in education who may not have secured that perfect job. In the first video, I talked about will any school do? And the simple answer is no, you need to choose a school that's right for you. In this part, part two, I want to talk about how do you shine in the application process, during interview, and how do you stand out from the crowd if you're already in a building, working on supply or on a temporary contract. So let's have a look. And we, we, we start with the letter. And I just want to talk through some quick wins in your application letter, because let's be honest, I've read thousands now, application letters, and they're all now of a very good standard. People know and are trained what to put in these letters. Let's be honest, you probably got help from someone in education. So the letters are already of a high standard. But what are the quick wins that can really make you stand out? And I know some of these are silly, but get the school name right and get the head teacher's name right. I've been Steph, Steve, S, Mr. Holding with an ING. I've even been called the predecessor's name. I've been called the, gov the chair of governor's name. And that isn't good enough, really. I know that head teachers should look beyond simple mistakes, but if this is your one chance to shine, then you've got to put the effort in and get the school name spelt right and the head teacher's name right. Just a personal bugbear there of mine. Um, my second point is do your research. It's really obvious when a letter has been copied and pasted and sent to 15 schools and of all the content may meet the job description and the person spec then so does everybody else's if they've done it right so you need to be a bit better than everybody else how do you do that well you make it personal you do your research you go on the website and if there's something that you like there about their curriculum or about their extracurricular offer or maybe it's something that you've seen on twitter then slip it into your letter that you're impressed with what you've seen or you'd like to get involved with something like that or a school that values certain things such as that. And um, look at the Ofsted reports. The Ofsted tell you so much about how well a school is doing and take some of those positives and put them into your letter. Explain how you would love to work for a school that is as forward thinking as the Ofsted, um, Ofsted letter or Ofsted report reads because Although you're not yet working in that school, you need to show that you're prepared to put the work in and the effort in and, and write a letter that's a bit more bespoke to that school. Another way you can add a, a layer of this is to look at the standards. And if you can see on the public documents that the school is performing well, then put that in the letter to show that you've done your research. Spell things right. I do know I've had teachers that will, as soon as they get to a spelling mistake, they'll get rid of the letter. If they can't spell it in a letter, they're not working in front of my children. I would like to think that I can oversee some simple mistakes because I really want to get to know candidates before they work in, in schools in which I work. But I do know I've had teachers that will, won't get past a spelling mistake and that's not good enough really. If you get one chance to shine, make sure you make it count. I've, I've explained about making it personal and you really should go to length to find something that you're impressed with and put it in the letter because head teachers love it when they read a letter that reflects back what they think of their school. Every head teacher is proud of their school. You should be telling them about that in their letter. So let's say that you've done that and your letter is bespoke and it really catches the eye of the senior leadership team and you get yourself to interview. I want to look at interviews a little bit differently because I think on your courses and in your universities, they will have told you how to answer questions. And I don't want to go through and tell you how to answer the safeguarding question right and the behaviour question right. I want you to think about this. All good candidates who've been shortlisted will be prepared. And even if you know the answer to every single question, so might somebody else. So I want you to think that even if you've done your prep and you've got all the answers, someone else might have done that as well. So how can you be different? How can you be better than other people? Well, the difference actually is you because the stock answers for behavior and safeguarding, but the difference in that interview to every other candidate is you. Firstly, your experiences. What is it about you and your experiences that make you different 
to everybody else. And I know what you're thinking. I'm an NQT. I've only got a couple of teaching practices under my belt. And yes, you must draw on those in the answers to your questions. But I'm talking about your life experiences and what you've learned whilst you've been on this planet. Because you can bring these things into interview and show how it's got you ready to be in front of those children. What have you learned from your own children, from your own parents, from people in your family? What have you learned from the life experiences that you've had, the different jobs? I remember one of the most impressive interview candidates I've met when asked about um, a certain question would use her own personal experiences to show how she's ready to teach in a school. And it wasn't examples of her teaching practices. She explained how she took a gap year and went traveling around Australia, but she used the opportunity to tell us what she'd learned and how she wasn't um, comfortable around groups of people until she did this, but she pushed herself to travel around Australia and she learned so much about herself, how to communicate effectively, how to make friends and build relationships, how to keep the timetables, how to finance her money appropriately. But what was great about the interview, she used all these experiences and channeled them back into why that would make her a good teacher at our school. And I thought that was such a clever way and it made her different to everybody else who was talking about how they did a good lesson once. She talked about her life and it was really interesting. I suggest you do the same. The second thing that makes you different to everybody else is your personality. I mean, you've got to come in there and be the most happy and bubbly person that they've seen because you're going to work with children and our children, they deserve nothing less. If you don't have a personality, well, you're in the wrong job. You shouldn't even be doing it then. So at least come in and be positive and happy and enthusiastic to be there. And actually that interview starts as soon as you walk in. Well, it starts before you walk in the building. Be, be aware of how you are on communication on emails, getting ready for the interview or a particular lesson observation you might have to do. Think about how you word your emails to the head teacher and the office staff. And then when you get to the school, you're on interview from the second you get out of your car because somebody will be watching you. Particularly the office staff. When you walk in, you must be relentlessly positive and happy with them because they will probably give their opinion to the head teacher once you've gone. So just remember your interview starts way before your allotted time on that fateful day. And remember, if you can be relentlessly positive, then you're probably going to really catch the eye amongst the other candidates that have already um, done their research too. You need to be one step ahead. Okay, this next bit is, well, what if you're already in a building at the minute? You're on supply, but a job might be going at that school and you really want to nail it. You might be on a temporary contract and you want to turn that into a long-term or full-time contract because that's the school for you. How can you shine? Well, here's a few hints and tips from me. Uh, if you can't read them, I shall read them out for you. And the first one, it's no mystery really. You've got to work hard. I mean, this is a difficult career. It's not an easy career that you're coming into, but you know what? It's fantastic. But you've got to work hard because people will see that you're working hard. And I don't mean do above and beyond what is expected. If you've chosen the right school, like in video one, they'll be looking after your well-being and they will have a decent work-life balance um, in their school. But I mean, you've got to work hard when you're there because our children deserve nothing less than the best teaching uh, and the best lessons every day. So make sure you're working hard. You get 14 weeks holiday a year, so you should be able to do that. My next one is the, to ask questions relentlessly because particularly in your early stages of your career. If you're on supply or you're working on a temporary contract, you should be asking questions all the time. Show your enthusiasm for that school and the way that they do things. And I don't just mean that asking questions works up the hierarchy, that you should be asking middle leaders and senior leaders. Asking questions, you can find information from anybody. Teaching assistants will know everything about the way that that school is run, what works well and what doesn't. I remember one of my teaching assistants in my early career was the source of so much brilliant information about how to teach in that particular context. Ask the children, speak to the children about what they like and how they like to be taught because then you will be able to serve them better. I know that if you speak to the cooks and the people in the kitchens, they will know the community and they will know the context of that school like the back of their hand. So ask questions so that you can become a better teacher. And again, you're showing that you care, you're showing that you're committed, 
even though you've not got a full-time job there just yet. My next point is share ideas. Use every opportunity to share your ideas. I know you're an NQT. I know that you might not have loads of fresh ideas, but you will start to realize that you can give to any school in which you work. If you are invited to go to staff meetings, I suggest you do. You share some of your ideas, some of your emerging themes that you've seen as you teach, because if you show that enthusiasm, it will be spotted by senior leadership and it might just give you a chance to secure that job that, that you really want. Be brilliant everywhere. Now, it's hard enough being brilliant in the classroom, but actually, when you're in a school, you've got to be brilliant all the time. The kids deserve nothing less. And I know that the, the head teachers and the senior leaders, they have eyes and ears everywhere. So think about when you walk from the classroom to the staff room, how many children must you pass? 20, 30? And there's an opportunity for you to show what you're all about. Be relentlessly positive. Say hello. Speak to staff as you walk past them, as you walk around the building, because it will be spotted about your positivity and your enthusiasm if you do it all the time and everywhere. And this one really labours the point, really. This is zero negativity. It is a, it is a, a passion of mine that people are relentlessly positive in education. We work with children every day, so shouldn't we be the most positive and excitable people? Of course, our children deserve nothing less. So don't get dragged into the, to the negative conversations that might happen in schools. If you're having a bad day, then don't let the children see it, but do something about it. If you're frustrated with a member of staff, then you're going to have to tell them. Or go and see senior leaders that can sort it out for you. But don't be negative in the school, because it's not the children's fault. So let's... Assume that you can be relentlessly positive, no matter what you do. So hopefully, uh, in, this, see, in this second video, you've understood a little bit how you can nudge your head in your application form during the interview. And if you're already in a school, some of the things that you really need to think about so that you can be better than the rest and secure the right job for you. In the third video, I'll be explaining how it's a diverse world out there and how the way that schools are led and managed differently can really affect your well-being. And you need to have an eye to that so that you can choose the right school for you.